Gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. Help us to hear you and to see you today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you remember the commercials on TV that stated, Choosy mothers choose Jif? Yeah, most of us remember that. Pretty strong statement. And if you were a good mom, you chose Jif, right? That was the right choice to make. That was the good thing to provide for your kids. Well, we can look back on that now, perhaps, and, and uh, wonder what was really behind that commercial. We don't know, but it was a simple choice that we have to make. What kind of peanut butter are we going to get for the kids, or get for our family, or whatever? And that might seem like an insignificant decision. When you're selling millions of jars of peanut butter every year, it's a pretty significant decision. And they want to make sure that you make the right choice, which was Jif. We make lots of decisions, don't we? Every single day we make choices about a wide variety of different things. Some of those choices are not what we would call truly significant, that are going to have a long-lasting impact on our lives. But others are. Now, just getting here this morning, you've made all kinds of choices, right? You chose to get out of bed. You chose to put clothing on. You chose to come here this morning to be with others to worship God. And so, and you've made lots of other choices, you know, what did you have for breakfast? What route did you drive to get here? How did you choose what you put on this morning? All those things, you made choices this morning, and the day's not even half done yet. You will have more choices to make throughout this day, and you will have choices to make this coming week. And some of them will be big, and some of them won't be so big. Some of them will be almost subconscious because perhaps you've made those choices hundreds of times before. Sometimes, as I said, the choices that don't seem so significant for us may be significant for others. Let me give you one quick example. The United Methodist Church supports Africa University in Zimbabwe, and there are many folks over there being educated and a number of years ago, one of their professors was to come to the United States for a conference. And a person who was part of our church in Westerville, who also is on the faculty at Otterbein University, was to meet this person in Chicago and get them to the conference and make sure everything was taken care of there. And so she met him, and as they were driving to where they needed to go, he made the statement, I need toothpaste. Now, how many of us really put a lot of thought into getting our toothpaste? Probably not many of us. So she just thought, okay, we'll stop by a store and we'll get some toothpaste. Now this guy's from Zimbabwe. She stopped by a large store in Chicago, went in, they found the aisle where the toothpaste was, and he took about two steps into that aisle and stopped. He had never seen so much toothpaste in his life. He didn't know what to do. He was overwhelmed by the number of choices of toothpaste. We might not even give that a second thought. He stood there for a while before he was able to go in and she had to help him locate the toothpaste that he was looking for. In Zimbabwe, he would go into a small market, there would be a few boxes of toothpaste. You didn't choose exactly the kind you wanted. You took what was in the store, and that was it. He had never been confronted by so much toothpaste. Decisions, choices, we make them every day. In the two passages we have heard today, there are lots of choices that are made. This passage from 2 Kings tells us of this great commander, Naaman. And he has leprosy. Apparently it doesn't really affect him in his job. He is well respected. He has the support of his king. He's highly regarded. He seems to be a great guy. But he has leprosy. 
And so he overhears, either from his wife or directly from this slave girl, that there's this prophet in Samaria that can do something about that. Now, this is a slave girl that they captured on a raid into Israel <coughs> one night. And he could have thought, she doesn't have anything worthwhile to say to me. But he chose to listen. And so he went to his king, who was unnamed, and shared this with him, that there's somebody who can do something about this leprosy. And so his king said, you go, go to the king of Israel and take care of this, and I'll send a letter with you to introduce you and all that kind of thing. So Naaman went, and he took all this stuff with him. I don't know how he chose what he decided to take. He took all this gold, all this silver, his clothing, and he went to find the king, presented him this letter. And what was the king's response? I'm not God! I can't do this! And then he thought, this guy, he's picking a fight with me. That's what's going on here. That was the response he chose. He tore his clothing. This is a bad thing. But it wasn't. When Elisha found out about this, he said, oh, I can do something about this. Just tell him to come and see me. And so Naaman gathered all his stuff, all his men that were with him, his horses, his chariots, all that stuff, and he went to Elisha's house. Now, Naaman was an important guy. And it was not unusual for a king to receive him. And so as he approached Elisha's house, hearing that this was the prophet who could do something about this, he probably thought, well, this is going to be a big show. Because he's going to cure me, I'm an important guy. And what happened? Elisha didn't even come out of the house. He sent somebody else out to talk to Naaman, to tell him what to do. And was it a big deal, what he was supposed to do? No, just go wash in the Jordan seven times, taken care of, have a good day. But what was Naaman's response? No, come on! I'm angry. This is supposed to be a big deal. I need to get healed. And his initial, initial choice was to go away in a rage over this. He was insulted that this is all he was supposed to do. One of his servants who was with him took the time to say, now look, you're a great man. If this guy had given you some great big quest to go on and complete, would you have done it? Yes, that's what you do, Naaman. You take your army and you have a great adventure and you accomplish things. But he's not asking you to do that. Just go wash in the river. What have you got to lose? So Naaman changed his mind. <clears throat> that servant could have chosen to just say, well, let's just, you know, go back to Aram. Not going to work this time. He chose to say something to Naaman that helped him see it in a different way. And he then chose to go and do what Elisha said he ought to do. And what happened? He was cleansed. His skin became like new again. He experienced a healing that was almost too simple for him to comprehend. And he finally got there. All kinds of choices came into play as that situation worked itself out. But he finally experienced that healing. <coughs> now as we turn to this passage from Mark's Gospel that Nada has read for us, we have another leper who comes to Jesus. Now remember, Jesus has had his experience with Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and he's healed all kinds of folks, and he went off by himself, and then he said, we need to be about the business of going around the area proclaiming the good news, and so he is in the process of doing that in Galilee. And on one of their travels, this leper just comes before him and says, if you're willing, you can heal me. 
he brought a, <coughs> excuse me, a stronger faith statement to what he wanted done than what Naaman expressed, even though obviously Naaman had some faith in Elisha or he wouldn't have gone there. But now this leper comes to Jesus. And in another translation it says that the leper said, if you choose, if you choose, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I do choose. I do choose to heal you. And he reached out and touched one that nobody else would touch because of that leprosy. And he healed him. That leper had made a choice to come and find Jesus because he knew Jesus could do this. Jesus chose to heal him in response to his situation. But then Jesus also said, now don't go spreading this all over the place. Just go to the priest, do those things that Moses said you should do in response to a cleansing like this, take care of it. Not only will you be physically healed, but you will then be welcomed back into society. You will be clean again. Go and do those things. It will be helpful to you, beneficial to you, to go and do those things. But what did he do? Told everybody. That's not what Jesus asked him to do. But that's what he chose to do. And we read that that made it kind of tough for Jesus. You know? Wasn't going to work the way Jesus was planning on this working. And so sometimes we also don't see the implications of the choices we make. But it didn't stop Jesus. He continued to heal. He continued to proclaim the good news. All these choices that are made in these stories, and again, we make choices every day. What motivates us in making the choices we do? Again, some of the things, it's not really a big deal, but sometimes we're faced with something, and how do we choose what we are to do? How do we make a decision about something that might be of real significance? Well, I'll offer a few things that I think will help us in those situations. I think our first question ought to be, what does God want us to do? What does God want? want. Now in response to that question, I'll give you three answers as well. Number one, I think God wants us to love Him. God loves us more than we can comprehend. And God wants us to love Him. And so that's the first consideration. I think beyond that, God wants us to give ourselves to Him. To say, God, here I am. I am yours. Not just say we love God, but truly love God by offering ourselves to Him. So I think God wants us to love Him. God wants us to offer ourselves to Him. And God wants us to follow His commandments. And when Jesus was asked the question, what's the most important commandment? To love God with all your heart, and soul, and mind, and strength. And he didn't stop there. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said those are the two most important commandments that there are. That's what God wants us to do. So what does God want? He wants us to love him. He wants us to offer ourselves to him. And he wants us to follow his commandments. To show that we really do love him. So our first question is, as we face a decision, what does God want? The next question would be then, what do others need? There's need all around us. And so as we're faced with a decision, is there a need that someone else possesses that we need to try to do something about? What do others need? And then the third question I would offer is, what do I need? What do I need? We know that sometimes needs and wants don't equal each other. 
And so while the first question is, what does God want? The next two questions are really about need. What do others need? What do I need? And I think that can help us as we go through and face those situations that call for a choice, that call for us to decide something. If we can remember those things, I think that will help us. Naaman got caught up in what he thought this healing ought to look like and feel like. And when it didn't match his expectation, he went off in a rage. This is not how it's supposed to work. His choice was to just go away. This is not how it's supposed to be. Somebody else helped him understand that he had a simple choice that could bring him healing. It may not have been what he expected. It may not have been up to his typical standards. It may not have given him as much regard as people gave him in other situations. But it brought him healing. And that's what he sought. That leper that came to Jesus simply sought the same thing, to be healed. And he chose to go to Jesus. And Jesus chose to touch him and to heal him. We have choices every single day, every single day to make. And I think as we put God foremost in our minds, we will make those choices that will honor him, that will express our love for him, and that others will be able to see. You're going to have choices this week. You may be expecting a very routine week. You may not get a very routine week. You may find yourself in a situation that calls for a choice. That choice may be as simple as helping somebody with groceries. It may be giving somebody a hug. It may be telling somebody that God loves them more than they can ever imagine. There are people out there who simply need to hear that. As you go through your week, I hope you look for those places to share the love of God with others. That they can see God working in you and know that God is in our midst. A simple choice? It may have implications far beyond what you can imagine. May your decisions this week be filled with God and your choices express the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all you do for us and for who you are. We pray that you will guide us in our decisions this week. Help us to make those choices that will reflect your love. Help us to make those choices that will allow others to see you. Help us to make those choices that will continue to spread your love throughout the world. Guide us in all we do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.